Howdy everybody, it's Amy from Amy Sparkly Diamond Painting. How are you doing tonight? This is Thursday evening. I'm doing a lot of videos today and I'm going to be playing them through the week. Or I shouldn't say playing them. I'm going to be uploading them through the week for you. But this one is a little bit more of a random catch-up. So I did my comparison video separately on my J Wall project going on. I did that one separately. I was going to do it as part of this video. But I thought it was long enough and I have enough people interested in that particular project that I did that as a separate video. So this one is one of my what I call randomness videos. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about updates on diamond painting, what I'm going to be doing. More like a whip and chat except I'm not going to be working on stuff. I'm going to be talking about stuff. So I do have one unboxing to show in this as well. So you won't be missing out on unboxings. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first I wanted to show the progress because this one is almost completed. I went through kind of a phase where I was trying to complete a bunch of my PR package projects that I had started. And I have some frame that'll be another video that I'm just about done with. And I'll be sharing that. But this is one of the ones I hadn't quite finished and then I got into my J-Wall project. I'll get this one done, but I did stop for a little while. Now this one came from Diamond Art Gift. And this is another Josephine Wall, but this is what happens when you buy a budget-friendly version of Josephine Wall. So I had done part of her, like from here over, and showed it before but I went ahead and finished the butterfly and some of the sky all I really have left is the rest of her hair and the moon so we're pretty close to the finish line on this one but I wanted you to kind of see the update of what the background looks like when you buy a budget friendly with very few colors so this one only has 22 colors which means that that orange was used for the face the dress parts of the moon coming up that orange was kind of scattered everywhere not really the best color for face but the message here is you get what you pay for so if this is cool with you this is what you get I think this one was I don't know 12 13 dollars on the website and the ones I'm working on for the comparison project those run into the hundred dollar range when you include the shipping from overseas and all that so it's up to you to decide the licensing is why those prices are higher as well as the quality and the number of colors they are definitely much better quality but you pay for it so the others are resin drills squares is what i'm working on but rounds are available and they are much larger and with over 200 colors whereas this is 22 colors colors computer rendered and just way too small for the particular art artwork so this one is a 40 by 60. so just wanted to show you an update on that it's nothing against diamond art gift they are a very good company. I've had no trouble working with them. They're actually one of the easiest for me to work with as far as PR packages and everything go. They're very friendly, very good customer service, very quick to respond. And I do enjoy them as a company. It's not on them. It's on the manufacturer. I'm trying to figure out why that white drill is there. I think it's supposed to be like a star, but <laughs> just my eye catches it and says, that's not right. So there are a few little scattered drills there that are just catching my eye on like does that even really belong there but anyway so that is the update on budget friendly J wall canvas from diamond art gift so I had already planned a comparison project of a different kind and I've talked about it before it just took a while to get here I wasn't initially planning on the J wall one but I'm enjoying it immensely but I had done this let's see if I can zoom out I'm a little zoomed in here it's still going to be hard to get it in frame so this is a Van Gogh this is um, hard for me to pronounce the correct name for it I see it often as red poppies and daisies so there we go <laughs> there's the official name 
So this is a 43 by 64 centimeter Vincent Van Gogh Diamond Art Club that I finished. I've been doing a lot of Vincent Van Gogh this year. I'll continue into next year doing them because uh, there are no licensing issues. Even though this is a Diamond Art Club one which does license their artwork, you can get a Van Gogh on a budget-friendly website or wherever and not worry about licensing because it is done before 1923 and in the U.S. it becomes open source or creative commons or whatever the words are that you want to call it, which means that you can use them. So all of Van Gogh's artwork is from the late 1800s and so you're free to make customs on it or use it without worrying about licensing. So this was the Diamond Art Club version. So we have a lot of AB drills in the background, a lot of the green, and then a lot of AB drills all over this table, as well as little sprinkles here and there in the yellows and the blues. But Diamond Art Club, their rendering is very color book style. I've used that term before. There's a lot of outlining and it's less uh, confetti heavy than other places. So it's a little bit different. So for example, this leaf here has all that black outline here. They all do. And then they're kind of colored in. So I was trying to, I still struggle to find a word for that, but it's, um, it's not really harsh. It's it's not blended is probably the easiest way to say it. It's not blended colors. It's a little more outlined. Um, anyway, <laughs> I won't get stuck on that forever. So let's look at a different option. So this is Jada Gem Shop. You've seen a few other canvases I've ordered from her before. I'm working on the four sunflowers right now from her. Well, this order just came in yesterday and I got two canvases, but we're only going to open one right now. And this is Jade's version. I can't see it. I can't bend it quite up of the same painting. So I ordered another one because again, comparison, you guys love comparisons and I do as well. So I thought I'd do this one as a comparison. I love Jade's drills. I love how she renders Old Masters artwork, which is the uh, famous artwork from the past. And she has a lot of options on there, but I think she knows I'm ordering Van Gogh's now. <laughs> I've ordered four, five now from her because I placed another order that's not here yet for one more. And then she showed her new releases for last week. I should have gotten my <laughs> I'm looking around. I moved all my scissors. I had to make my table cleared off and I didn't think to keep some scissors over here. So maybe this will work. I have a cutter. There we go. I just need to get into that plastic. I'm not good with fingernails. <laughs> as you've probably seen and so I struggle sometimes getting plastic off but anyway Jade posted another Van Gogh last week and I'm like no I even said that on her website because I had just placed an order for a different one the week before so I'm gonna hold off for now since I have so many to catch up but Jade at Gem Shop comes in her own branded box here and I should have brought this up on on my comparison video about the J walls and the one with the diamond art when the one with the diamond art orders and ships theirs they come straight from China so they are drop shipped from China now Jade offers that option if you like but the standard is that she looks it over first so she has all of the stuff instead of going from China to you, it comes to her first and then she looks it over, packages it, adds her little goodies and then sends it to you. So it's a little bit different process, which means that she's probably more likely to catch mistakes because on my one with the diamond art, it did come with a mistake and that was related to the sticker sheets, which caused me a fair amount of trouble when I was kidding up. So we'll remove the goodies here first. Whereas Jade, you can have the option to drop ship from China. 
but it's probably in your best interest to wait just that extra week and let Jade look it over and do her thing with it first. So here is the thumbnail and you'll notice this one only has 52 colors but uh, Diamond Art Club had 41 colors. So this one already has more colors and it is a little bit bigger. So it's printed sideways here but you can see already one of the differences right off the bat is in the confetti. So we do have the daisies here. We have the start of the red flowers. But you'll see... Well, let's see. So the vase here is not very confetti heavy. You see these even lines of color, of the same color. Whereas if you look at this vase, you still see some of those lines, but you see a lot more confetti. And that is a Jada Gem Shop thing. She does also now offer pixel charts, which are completely hand rendered, not done by computer, but I actually like the confetti, which is why I wanted to see this one done by Jade and her style of rendering, because it's a mix of computer and hand rendering get the goodies out and that just to me gives a softer end result and I prefer the softer more watercolor end results so what we have I didn't order a toolkit that is an option that you can choose to but the default is not to but so many of us that order from there have been doing diamond painting for a while we probably don't need a toolkit but she does include her jade tape in there and we oops it wants to keep jumping. We do have a cute little cover binder that matches. That's red. And if you're into cross stitch, this is a needle minder. So they do the same thing, use the same thing with the magnet on the front and the back and that holds your needle when you're not working on your cross stitch. So needle minder, cover minder, same thing. So we have three bags of drills here. And then we have some release paper comes with four sheets of release paper which four doesn't sound like a whole lot but if you peel back the plastic kind of like I do and partially cover it's plenty and if you buy enough canvases from Jade then you'll have a whole set of uh, release paper so you do get a sticker sheet and these are pre-cut here as you can see so we have 52 colors there is the picture, but you've already seen it a few times now. <laughs> and those are the symbols and the colors and the amounts of drills. And I do have two ABs, and I'm not sure exactly. That's probably a pixie dust or something. I'll have to see what that is, because I did order special drills with this one. There were special drills on the other one. But we have AB321 which I think is a blue. We have 666, which is red. And G, yeah, that's a glitter drill, 3865, which is a white. So the blue and the white are copycats, almost exactly, of the colors that Diamond Art Club chose. But they added the green, and I maybe 321 is a green. I'll have to see. I don't remember exactly my DMC colors. But in any case, we have three special drills on this one as well. So again, 41 colors versus 52 colors, but it is a bigger size as well. So I'm going to look real quick here. So Jade does use resin drills, but they do come in different size bags depending on how many there are. So we have lots of reds as we would expect. So here's the difference here. These bags hold like a thousand, these hold 200. So if you need 1,000 and, well, 1,600, instead of doing an extra thousand bag, you'll get a few of these little ones mixed in. So you do have to kind of sort through these when you're kidding up and see how many you have and deal with the little baggies as well as the big baggies but I've been diamond painting since like 2017 2016 and the little baggies were the only way drills came so I'm pretty used to those it doesn't bother me 
at all. Lots of 164, which is that light green for the background. There, so there's our first bag of drills, but I feel like I've unboxed the other version of this one. So you probably don't need the details of the colors and my puppy dog as an issue. Chinook! Okay. The neighbor has been out and about because we're actually cooler than normal. So I don't see the special drills in this bag, so we'll go... Ah, there we go. Oh, check this out. Ooh, look at that. These are all ABs. So this is the AB666. Look at all those red dr special drills that are going to be all over the flowers. And actually, the other one, the Diamond Art Club, didn't have red for one of the special drills. Here is, okay, 321 is also a red. I thought maybe it was a green or the blue. Chinook! Hopefully that's not too, too loud for you. Oh, the other dog's here. Okay, hopefully they went outside. But you can see here, lots of red AB drills in this one. Lots and lots of red. So that is quite a bit different. I thought maybe it would be somewhat the same, but I don't want it to be the same. I want them to be different, so that's quite all right. As a matter of fact, it makes me happy. So let's see, I'm trying to find the other one, which I believe is an off-white glitter drill. But if so, it's not as obvious. I keep looking at this one, but that's 762. That's just a regular off-white. Well, you guys don't want to be stuck forever watching me go through this. So I'll just move those off to the side. Maybe it's in this one. Yeah, there is an off-white in there, so maybe that's it. I don't know if you guys care the detail. Nope, that's 3024. I'm just kind of making sure that that G is a glitter drill. 738. 159. You guys probably saw it and you're saying, you're trying to yell at me through the video saying, but you had it in your hand. Yeah, I probably did. Oh well. We'll find out when we kit it up and do it. It's somewhere in there. So let's take a closer look at the canvas. This is going to be hard because it is bigger than the other one. But we'll take a close up here so you can see the drill field. So for example, this green, instead of having stripes of different colors, you see it's got all the different colors mixed in there a little bit more, a little bit more on the confetti. You can see it there in the white as well, but definitely in the red. So those flowers are going to be full of ABs, red ABs everywhere in those flowers. But I was kind of surprised with the other one that there, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of blue drills, but there were plenty because there were a few different colors of blue. So the blue is more like a highlight rather than a main part of this, as well as the white for the daisies. This is a lot, a lot of red. So if you don't like the color red, then you probably would not like this too much. But boy, look at those Christmas colors in that. So again, the comparison here as much as is possible within this. Of course, there, there is a size difference and a color difference, but you can see, hopefully even more so once I finish this, how different it is going to look. So again, this one, the ABs are the whites. There's some blues and most of the green, so it focused mostly on the background, whereas the ABs on this one are going to be front and center with the flowers. So that'll be exciting and fun. So that is my latest Jaded Gemshot comparison project.
but this one it's a little harder to do a direct comparison because they are different sizes i didn't even try to get the same size because even though i enjoyed doing that other one it wasn't meant to be on my wall or anything it was just for fun because it was a a medium sized van gogh i i did it for the enjoyment of diamond painting and it was enjoyable as a diamond painting but this one may end up being a little bit more of a display piece possibly so that's why it's bigger so that's what we got for you here let's see how long have we been going here um 20 minutes okay we got plenty of time i will move this out of the way and we'll switch gears here i'll be right back all right i'm back and i was gonna switch gears here in a few minutes and talk about and show a little bit more cross stitch stuff but before i do because i know not all my diamond paint painters want to see and hear about cross stitch but i knew some of you like to watch longer videos and that one was only 20 minutes so i thought i'd add cross stitch into the second half of this with a bit of a kidding up but it's beaded cross stitch so it kind of is both <laughs> it's a little more like diamond painting than regular cross stitching is but anyway I wanted to remind everybody that I do have a giveaway going for my 2000 subscriber video and it's been amazing to see the response from that. It was shocking to me because my giveaways so far have had like 20 to 30 entries and we're up to like 170 <laughs> right now. So I did go ahead and buy a third uh, Diamond Art Club small painting on Amazon. It is a lighthouse painting, so there are now three prizes that I will be giving away. Three of those smaller Amazon Diamond Art Club diamond paintings. They run about $20 to $25 each. I got them on sale, $20. And I'll be giving those away here coming up. So the end of the entry, uh, entries will be cut off at the end of August. So midnight on September 1st, the entries will stop. And hopefully I will get a video out on September 1st or September 2nd with the drawing. So if I put a heart on your comment on that video, it means I've seen it and I've entered you into a spreadsheet which assigns each person a number from one to however many it ends up being in the end. But I do appreciate, I, I thought, you know, 2,000 subscribers, it is a big milestone. It's huge. But now I'm up to over 2,200. So something happened with people getting word there was a giveaway. Whatever happened there, I don't know. But my <laughs> subscribers continue to climb. So I do appreciate it. I will continue to try to bring content that you want to see but i do also enjoy a little bit of cross stitch these days it's been fun to get back into it and i do have a couple companies that ask me to do pr packages from time to time for cross stitch so i hope you bear with me as i include some of that on my channel as well so what we have here are a few different things first off i'll show a little progress update so i found this cool kit if you wanted to just try cross stitch but didn't want to spend very much and you wanted to get a kit in no time i got this bookmark set on amazon and i will put the links below this is about as basic as you can get if you want to try it out this is 11 count these are pre-printed on here you can see they've got the printing already on there and pre-cut out and they came with the thread and the backing fabric and then not really a pattern because it's printed on so you get this little piece of paper not very many instructions there there is a little bit of instruction on how to do cross stitching and you get your color inventory on here you can see not too many colors but this has six bookmarks and this was a really really cheap kit i'll have to look it was under ten dollars for six bookmarks but you get the color coding like this. So it does show the colors here, but then you have a little circle and an arrow pointing to which areas are which color. And then these are felt on one side and a sticker on the back. So once you're done, you just peel that off and stick it on and voila, quick and easy bookmark. So I thought this would just be a fun project I might be able to do 
uh, use one as a tutorial. But when I got this, I sat down and said, ah, let me try to do one of these. And then I couldn't stop. So as you see, this one only has a little bit of this bottom yellow flower to do and a little bit of the border. That's when I stopped. I was working on the border. So this is 11 count, which means three strands of floss. But these are very basic colors. They're not going to be all the fancy blending of flowers or anything. This is more like, you know, color book style is what I would call these as well, where you don't have very many colors and the same colors are used throughout all the bookmarks. But really quick and easy project here. You can see the back. And I'm not sure if the ink washes out, but because it's the same color as the thread, it really doesn't matter <laughs> for this particular purpose. I may not even try to wash them. So you can see it covers up nicely, but the colors on here actually match the floss colors, which makes it even easier, which is why I think this is a good beginner project. But you'll also notice the edges are not surged, but I have almost completed this one and there has been absolutely no fraying of the edges. There's only three rows there of Ida cloth beyond the border. And it has not frayed at all. You can see the cutting lines from the factory on that, kind of the blue lines there. Hopefully you can see that on the edges in a couple spots, probably shows up at the bottom. They're a little bit easier, but it hasn't frayed at all. Of course, I've been very careful, but these are starched pretty heavily. So I've been able to just work on it in my hand, no hoop, nothing like that necessary, just what came with the kit. And what came with the kit was a needle threader and several needles. And it's interesting, I actually prefer these needles to the ones that typically come with cross stitch kits. These are applique needles, they aren't cross stitch needles, which means that they have the wide opening there to thread them, which maks it easy, but they're very sharp. So typically, for cross stitch needles, they're more blunt at the bottom because you don't want to poke through the fabric. But the way I like to stop and start, th start threads, I do want to poke through the fabric. So I actually prefer these needles. So I've been enjoying, that's part of the reason I don't think I could stop. These are indeed very sharp needles there, but yet have the big holes for threading. And it's just been a fun little project. I'm not going to poke the needle through to hold it like I normally do because I don't want to risk fraying that, especially near the end. And that's where these idea of cover minders can come into play. I probably shouldn't have put it up there when the needle's down here, but you can put a cover minder on here and this magnet probably and it's meant more for diamond painting but it'll hold your needle secure there and you got a cute little magnet picture so i thought these were were fun the thread came like this with the dmc number on it but what's interesting i've only had to cut two of them i know it looks like a mess um here's yeah that's the color I was actually working on. I've got them kind of tied up here in little hanks, but you can see there aren't that many different colors. We have two shades of red, two shades of orange, a light and a dark, only two shades of green. So they all, all of the bookmarks use the same two colors of green. You don't need to keep track of the numbers or anything. It's pretty clear what color is what. So you'll see, I didn't even write the numbers down or put them on floss cards or anything to keep track of the numbers. Cause basically light orange, dark orange, light red, dark red, and then really dark red, one yellow. We got three shades of pink and a few shades of purple. But what you'll see here is that even though they are in hanks, they are pre-cut, except for like two of them I had to cut, but you see all those ends? So if I pull this out here, you'll see that it's already pre-cut thread. So really simple to start working on it and use it. But there were two colors that I did have to cut myself, but that's real easy to do. You just measure one length using the others to get the same length. And then you just cut them all to that length. So I'm going to tie this one in there with the number, but basically there's only two shades of pink. Well, three, I guess it looks like. 
here. So this is the lightest pink. It doesn't really matter what the number is. So anyway, really simple, fun cross-stitch kit if you wanted to try it out without investing any real money or time or having to wait for it to come from overseas. So that's that. And an update on this one. This was a PR package from Seven Great. So thank you, Seven Great, for providing this one. It was one I really wanted. And now I heard today from watching Stitcherello, one of my favorite stitchers, that there is another gnome out with succulents or cacti. So I'm going to have to hunt that one down. I need to get some caffeine in my system here. Sorry about that. So this one is quite a contrast because this is 14 count, but this also has over 80 colors, I think. Yeah, 78 colors on this one, plus a couple blends. So I did start working on it and the canvas looks a little bit wrinkly. That was on purpose because I was trying to soften it because I do work in my hands. But I did get the Death Star done. <laughs> It actually didn't look at, like the Death Star until I started working on this. I've, I decided to start with the pom-pom on the end of his hat. And I've covered up all the weird symbols and colors with the correct colors. See how many colors that is. It's created some really nice blending there at the bottom of that pom-pom. But because of that dark purple symbol there that I haven't covered up yet. It looks like the Death Star from Star Wars. And yeah, I am a Star Wars fan. And so it has that that ring like the Death Star on there. So I'll be covering that up this week. I'll probably be taking this one with me on my mini trip. So tomorrow night we are headed to Brady. We are staying the night in Brady because I am working at the Brady Goat Cook-Off. So I am providing weather support for the Brady Goat Cook-Off. We have a large number of people gathering. And I had somebody ask me, are you on TV? Because I mentioned weather and meteorology. I am not on TV. I work for the National Weather Service, which is part of the U.S. federal government. We are the ones that make this sound on your TVs when there's bad weather out there. We're the ones issuing all those heat advisories and winter storm warnings and severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings and all that. We are the ones behind the scenes providing that weather information to the media that then broadcast it out. So I'm not a broadcaster in any way. I am a meteorologist with a degree in meteorology. I studied it in college. Uh, any Aggies out there, I went to Texas A&M University. A lot of uh, meteorologists from this part of the world went there. But anyway, one of the things we do besides just putting out all the watches and warnings, our number one job is to keep people safe. And so we also deploy out to larger gatherings of people outdoors and offer weather support, especially if there is a chance of rain or heat or some sort of significant weather that can affect people because we need to get people out of the way quickly enough and into safety. And when people are outdoors at concerts, football games, Brady Goat Cook-Off, other ga gatherings where there are lots of people away from cars, we have to give enough time and, and get people to safety. So that's what I will be de doing Saturday for the first half of the day is providing the weather support and then the second half of the day because I have another person coming in to relieve me means I get to spend the second half of the day enjoying the Brady Goat Cook-Off. All that to say, I'm catching up on a few videos now, so I will post a couple videos, but I'm actually not going to be here. My kiddos, however, will, will be here holding down the fort. They'll be working. So I'm looking forward to enjoying eating some barbecue goat and enjoying the festivities as well as watching the weather out there. So no, I am not on TV. I am a meteorologist behind the scenes. I... Um, I'm actually, I, I don't talk about my position much, but I am the meteorologist in charge at the office. You've probably searched my name if you've been that curious about what I do. I, I am the person in charge at the office. So we have other people doing most of the forecasting and warnings and working the radars and all that. My job is making sure everybody gets paid and all the things with the building and all that other stuff are taken care of as well as any personnel issues, all that stuff. So I'm actually the boss out there, which means I don't work the forecast shifts very often, but I do help cover shifts when people are on leave. And right now, 
believe it or not, even though school is back, we don't have too many people with young kids back in school. So we have a fair amount of people taking off because it's no longer as hot. And it's a good time for vacation out here is when, when things start cooling off a little bit. So, all that to say, I will be taking this project with me <laughs> and just circle back around wondering how in the world did I get there. So, uh, because I will be in a hotel room uh, just one evening, really short trip. It's too hard to take diamond painting with me, but cross stitch is easy to take with me. And now that I have my little art dot lighted magnifying glass, I can actually sit in bed in a hotel room because they're typically dark and I can work on cross stitching for uh, no problem, much easier. So I will be taking this with me and hopefully getting that from no longer looking like the Death Star into looking like a pom-pom because I'm really my favorite part that I thought I really wanted to work on was this and also the stuff around here and the knitting in the hat. I want to see how that comes out. So that's an update on my dwarf. I'm enjoying all the pinks and purple colors but definitely a very different project than the other one. So what is time here um oh it's hard to tell because this is a restart so we're at 35 minutes i think 20 plus 15 i can math a little bit so i thought i'd do a short quick unboxing of this but more of a kidding up of this because i have found another use for these harbor freight tools tools for these harbor freight storage boxes so my hubby picked this up for me today because he said i have to run to harbor freight and i said "Ooh, while well, you're at it uh, give me a storage case. So these come with 24 little containers inside the outer storage here and I love these. I use these sometimes for diamond painting but sometimes the tops don't seal as well so you can get a little bit of spillage. I haven't had enough problem to worry about it um, but I do like to kit up sometimes in these for projects that don't have quite as many colors. I'll use two of them for like a, a 50 color project. I'm gonna make some noise here. Oh, let me just get it that way. There we go. We'll just spill them out there because I'm going to be using them. So that's my Harbor Freight containers. They're really cheap. Find them in the back corner, but I, I like these little snap-off lids. But these are perfect, I found out, for the cross-stitch beading projects. So this one, I liked the first one I did, and I bought another one. I'm going to be sending one to my big sister, Tracy, who loves cross-stitching. Hello, Tracy, if you're listening. You'll be getting a box from me soon in the mail. But I saw this one. They're coming out with more and more of these. It's hard to keep up. So if you like beaded cross-stitch, you might want to take a look because now you have animals, you have scenery, big pictures, all that. But I picked this one because of all the bright colors on it. So this was still at a time when they had flowers mostly, but now they are expanding out to all sorts of beaded cross-stitches. And it's all the different companies out there. Fan cells, paint some way, outdoor tide, one day saving, seven grade, all of the different cross stitch companies. And there is a way to carefully peel the sticker off to keep this box, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. So these kits come in Chinese. I don't think they have an English or other translation. Yet, so we have our bags of beads. Look at all those beautiful colors. They have kind of a metallic sheen to them. They are plastic so that they're not too heavy because if these were glass, it would really make it heavy. I have uh, another one of these projects about a third of the way done and boy, it is heavy. And I'm looking the sheet of paper. Maybe it's still in here. Yes, it is. There is a sheet of paper with instructions. It is in Chinese. You do need to use a translator if you need to see the details, but basically make sure all your stitches go in one direction, either one way or the other, but make sure they all lean in the same way in order for the beads to look nice and neat. And then you have the chart here. It's printed on a nice fabric, fabric, Oof. a nice uh, pattern here that 
this is the true color, whereas on the canvas it's printed in a different symbol, different contrasting color to make it easier to see on the canvas. So don't get the charts mixed up because the color symbols on here are not the same as they are on the canvas. So that is one thing you always need to check uh, with all your cross stitch brands when you look at it at first make sure that the chart uh, symbols are for the chart and make sure that you know that the canvas symbols may not be the same sometimes they are so you have to look and see but in the, these particular cases they are not so it looks like 21 colors that seems to be the standard is in the lower 20s which is why I figured a 24 color Harbor Freight storage system would work for these and these are nine count typically and it looks like we have kind of bottom here although it's upside down we'll put it right side up here so here's the bottom and then here's the top so the chart is really big very easy to read but you don't really need that unless you have trouble reading the canvas so this is a bit bigger than the first one that I did but I did really enjoy working on the one that I have that I'm getting done with I wanted to get up kit up and get ready with another one here that's just a little bit bigger and a little bit more colorful but you can see looking at this with only 21 colors here it's a lot of uh, color blocking as we would call in diamond painting there's not a lot of confetti but with the bead bead cross stitch it doesn't matter because you're not switching out the thread color so you use this for the thread it's kind of like a nylon almost like fishing line I use it doubled so I get a long string put the needle on it fold it in half and I actually do something that I don't normally do with diamond painting I well of course I don't do it <laughs> dang I need to drink some more caffeine <laughs> regular cross stitch you don't tie knots but because I want this thread secure and it's a little bit slippery and it's important to secure the beads I do go ahead and tie a knot with this so I use it double stranded <sighs> so looks pretty easy to read here I'm not seeing any issues with the ink on this no bleed over nothing like that but you can definitely tell it's nine count those really big squares and then these are the the symbols that match they're very easy to see so I probably don't need the chart because even these diagonal lines they have a different color background there so it's pretty easy to tell them apart and if the color doesn't make sense chances are you're reading the symbol wrong with only this many colors it's pretty easy but I did find with my other one that kidding them up in these little harbor freight containers to hold the beads it's really easy to do the beading i just put a sticker with the number on them and i put them in order one through 21 in this case and i just pop open the lid use the needle to scoop out a bead and close it with the other hand and really simple i, I really do enjoy kitting them up this way so once i found this trick they were much easier because when I was doing that first one before I was trying to work out of the baggies so I had to dig through try to find the baggie and then open it and try to stick my needle in there and grab one without spilling any out and I was losing beads and spilling and it was just much harder to grab them so once I discovered how much easier it was to use these containers I'm never going back to the baggies for these so we'll take a quick look at these colors because one of the things I have noticed with these is that the, you do get pretty subtle color changes in these to the point where you almost can't tell the difference and you wonder why there are that many colors like that. So, oh boy, I'm trying to figure out how to sort these greens. So for example, even though that this one has a lot of bright colors look at how many shades of green it has and how many are close so 17 and 1 actually look quite close to each other 17 is just slightly light, lighter 
than color one. And these are pretty close. Five, six, and seven are a few slightly variant shades. But it helps with the blending, which I do like blending, but at the same time, they're so close that it might be a bit too much. Now, 15 and 16 here, they're pretty close as well. And it could be that your eyes work better than mine because I do have some trouble now with contrast due to a bit of damage on my retinas. So the color is a little more washed out for me. I have one eye that sees color better than the other. So if I blink or wink, I can see it differently. But those two look awfully close. And then we have the reds here. So 24 and 4. Slight variation there, but then we have color 2 in the middle there. And then color 20, 3, and 18, a few pinks. But then color 10 looks a lot like the other reds here. Another light blue and then a light and dark gold. So those are all the colors that come with this one. We'll see if we'll get this one up here at the end. I'll kit it up. For tonight i'm just not sure that you guys want to see all that on camera i got one pink bead rolling around here but these are another easy fun relaxing type cross stitch project as opposed to this one which has a little more color changes and all that that's my my dwarf i just showed you this one because you're not changing thread colors you're only changing bead colors it's a little more closely related to diamond painting, but it's also an easy stitch. So you load up your thread and you just start going across the row, switching the bead colors as you go. So really, really simple, fun, and the outcome is beautiful, especially if you're into the sparklies, because it's hard to tell. I know in my other one, yes, I can see it now on this one. You probably can't tell this fabric is glittery. So there are glitter threads throughout this Ida cloth. So even the background fabric is all glittery. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. And one last look there at the picture. Really pretty. And you could diamond paint this as well since you have the chart here and the DMC numbers. Oh wait, hello. That's the part you don't have, <laughs> the DMC numbers. But you can use a DMC uh, chart online here to match them up. And then you could diamond paint it if you want to, but I think there's enough diamond paintings out there that it's probably not necessary. So I have one more cross stitch kit. This is a large one but it is from my favorite brand or one of my favorites joy sunday is one of my favorites spring is turning into the one even slightly more favorite than joy sunday and that's because they have more 11 counts so that's easier on my eyes they have more colors in a lot of cases and they do have the nice egyptian floss and some of theirs this however is not egyptian floss because it's an 11 count it is available in a 14 count but i prefer the 11 count i do have plenty of joy sunday kits as well um, some of them are 14 count but it seems like most of the ones you find these days are 14 count and that's a little bit harder in my eyes i still do them but i do them during the daytime or with my magnifier Whereas 11 count, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's turn this. I think it actually goes this way. So we have a picture with roses and what looks like maybe a tree stump or a rock here with a bird. So let's see what's in the box here. So what we get with Spring Brand is the color chart here. It's usually stapled and usually out of order. So half the fun is figuring out what order all your pages go into. Usually there's a key which is right here. That shows which section of the chart is on which page. So this one, as I expected, 83 different colors of full stitch on this one. And there is some um, blended full stitch there, which makes it more like four more colors there. So 87 colors, essentially. But 
Uh, the blended ones, you do one of each strand. However, because this is 11 count, one of each strand would be only two instead of three. So I'm gonna see what the coverage is. I'll do either two or four instead of three for the blended, but only for the blended ones, not the entire thing, because doing four, four strands on this, it, it can get kind of thick at times. I'm doing one with four strands, but I don't like it as much as the three strands, so we'll see. But it also has, it says full stitch here. I'm wondering what the difference is between these full stitch and these blended. Hmm. I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out. And then we do have five colors of backstitch on there, which backstitch is the outlining, as you can see here on the chart around some of these flowers. I don't mind backstitching. I enjoy watching a pattern come to life when you add the backstitching at the end. So there you see the little yellow birds and then the, the bigger bird here. And the backstitching on the flowers. And I was trying to look for... Uh, that's on number two, page two. That's why sometimes going through, there he is. <laughs> the bird. And it looks like the bat stitching for him is on his feet. Then you have your instruction page. And then you have all the thread and the canvas. And Spring Brand will package a canvas separately because you don't want to get it wet. I probably should have said that a few times with the other two that I showed before this, that if you get it wet, the ink comes off, which you want at the very end, but not before the very end. So this is actually an off-white canvas here. So we'll take a look. There's the opening here. We'll start with the canvas and then move to the threads. Oh, it's so soft. I like the softness of the spring brand canvases. They're not quite as stiff, which makes them, in my opinion, a little bit easier to work on in your lap because this is a lap project. As you can tell, this thing is huge. And I'll have to look up the measurements or work it out. Well, I can sort of work it out here. Because this is 11 count, it says at the top here that we are 281 wide by 441 high. So if it were 10 count, that would be 28 by 44 inches. So 11 count means just slightly under that. So, so we have 11 squares per inch instead of 10 squares per inch. So here, I'm trying to scroll down. There's no way to put this on camera, but you can see how the canvas is printed there. And you don't see a whole lot of what we would call confetti in diamond painting. It's the same thing. Confetti in uh, cross stitching is a lot of color changes where you do one or two stitches and then have to change. This is more linear all over here with the leaves. So you can Fill your needle with the thread and completely use up the thread before you have to switch to another color. So there's plenty to do in each area of any individual color. So there's the flowers over there. Really, really pretty. Oh, I love this canvas. I want to start this one right away. It's just, it feels so good and it's so soft and I just picture sitting on the couch and enjoying this one because... There are three episodes of the One, Way, bleh, the One Ring Season 2 tonight. So Season 2 of the One Ring starts tonight, or today. And they put out the first three episodes all at once, and then they do them individually after that. So I need to do a little bit of couch TV time. So it's kind of hard. I was trying to make out the bird. There he is. <laughs> There's our bird. So here's his tail and his beak and his feet. You can see his little little feet right there. And then we have the two smaller yellow birds up here in the tree. So looks like it's printed really well. And I don't often use the canvas chart on these bigger canvases 
because it's way on the edge and I'm usually holding, I start at the bottom left. A lot of times I work my way up, although it doesn't matter where you start because you just, it doesn't matter. There's no sticky you're trying to cover like diamond painting and you're not having to count like you do with counting cross stitch. So you can just work on whatever parts you want to. But in most cases, the chart is like way up there and I'm working way at the other end, way down here. And so trying to find the chart and look over it, although boy, that looks like easy stitching there. But anyway, so I, I don't often use this chart. What I use is the pattern and do the switch from one to the other. So for example, this bottom one here, since this would be where I would start, it looks like a diagonal line that's either purple or some sort of dark color. But since this has over 80 colors, a couple of them can look the same to my eyes. So I would look at this and I'd say, well, that looks like it could be, oh, I'd have to look all the way down through here to find one going the right direction. It could be that color right there, which is 56 color number 56, which is DMC 3024. A lot of times there might be more than one. They're just slightly different colors, like a red versus a dark pink. So what I do is I look at the chart here and it does take me just slightly longer to start off, but then I get going pretty quick. So on page seven is that bottom corner and I can see what color it's actually supposed to be, which is a tan. So I will find page seven, and they are numbered at the bottom, page five, six, one. I, I usually end up just tearing off the staples because they make up their own order sometimes on these. Page three, four, one. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Hopefully I'm not wasting your time. Here's the bottom. And so I see that that bottom is actually symbol three on here. So I can look up three on here. It's dash, that's not three. You have to watch out and make sure. Where's three? I don't see, there it is. So three is indeed that same symbol. So you get the canvas symbol as well as the paper pattern symbol right next to each other. And indeed, see it's number 56 or 3024. So then I go to number 56 on the card and pull that color. So I like that you can see both of them on these spring brand kits. You can see the chart color as well as what it looks like on, on the canvas. So if you can't tell on the canvas, you can refer to the chart and get that confirmation that just makes you feel a little bit better that, you, that you're using the correct color there. So that's how I do these. So let's talk about the yarn. Yarn? Oof. Let's talk about the thread. <laughs> so I was curious. Okay. I didn't look as close. This one, it's checked off on the brown there, 11 count, but the other one is 11 count as well. There we go for the size 75 by 112 centimeters. But they're both 11 count, so I'm guessing one is four strands and one is three strands. They may have given me enough because of those blended colors to do four strands. That may be the difference. I will use Google Translate to confirm that, but they may actually want me to do four strands on this one because this is a lot of thread because we have some that is in skeins here for some of the colors that are used a lot. There, so those are the extras. And these are the floss cards. Let's look at the floss. This is where the colors will really come through. So we do have four needles, four really nice needles here. And they are the bigger ones for 11 count. I like to go down a needle size. So the bigger the number, the smaller the needle. So like a 26 is a little bit smaller than say a 22 or 24. I like the 24s or 26s. I prefer the smaller ones. So we'll see what we use. But a lot of times I'm lazy and I'll just use what I have. So lots of color four. I'm guessing that's black right there because there's quite a bit of it. But it looks like the floss is really soft here. So we have lots of 
greens and blues and reds with the lower DMC numbers on this card and a lot of off-white. And my kiddo says hi. Hi, Megan. Hi. <laughs> Megan's walking through. And then we have on card number two here, we have 31 through 60 with a lot more of the dark greens and more pinks and golds and maroons and reds, blues, all sorts of colors there. Let's look at them that way. I'll put them all together here in a minute. And then the last card here, which is color 61 through 84. Here, are a lot more pinks. Those are for the rose colors, I bet. Those look like rose colors. And then more greens, since there are a lot of plants in this. So let me move the box away so we can look at all the colors here together. Let's put them all together and see if we can make them show here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see them all this way, but all of the colors there. Maybe we can twist them and you can get the full spread of colors from this. Very, very pretty. Now, because this is 11 count, these are the ecology threads. These are not the Egyptian cotton, but I actually prefer these a little bit because I find them to be softer and a little bit thicker to work with. So I know the other ones, once you wash it, they'll fluff out a little bit. The Egyptian cotton is supposed to be better. It is a little bit thinner, so you might find it easier to stitch with. But I actually prefer the softer myself as I'm stitching. So, oh, these are soft and shiny. Beautiful colors. So it just makes me want to work on this one. And it seems to be, in general, that... Uh, cross stitchers have an easier time with multiple whips because we're not having to store these things laid out like you do with diamond painting canvases. You don't have to worry about losing stick or keeping them protected or keeping the dust and pet hair off of them in quite the same way. And you wash these things at the end. That's how you get all the ink to go away when you're done is washing them. So it's a little bit easier to have multiple projects going at once. They fold up much smaller. You can fit them in a little project bag and then just grab one when you're ready to work on it. So each night you can pick a different project and work on it. So it seems like more cross stitchers tend to start multiple projects than diamond painters. But it doesn't matter. It's whatever you prefer. But I love this and I think it's going to work out beautifully. Not sure what I'll do with it. <laughs> what it kind of speaks to me of is like a blanket. So I would probably put like a backing fabric and a little bit of quilt batting in it and quilt it. Almost like a wall hanging quilted picture. But the background of this is not worked. So it is a partial. So this white background is not worked so that'll make it go a little bit faster but i imagine like quilting like a gold quilting thread on the background or something like that so again here is the picture and even though the box lays that way i'm pretty sure i'd want it to go that way with the bird like that so i think we've done enough chatting. I know it seems like it's a little more cross stitching than diamond painting, but part of that is because I split off my uh, Josephine Wall video separately that I did because some people are just interested in that and I don't want them to have to sit through all the cross stitching stuff if they don't want to. So I do appreciate everybody out there. Don't forget to uh, look at my 2,000 subscriber video and get your name in the drawing before it's too late. So midnight on the night of August 31st, turning into September 1st, we will cut that off and we will do the drawing. I'll do it right away, but whether I get the video posted or not will be a little bit different story. 
but there are three Diamond Art Club little kits that I'll be giving away and we're looking at probably 170, 175, maybe a few more stragglers coming in there uh, that'll be trying for those and if I draw somebody who's from the UK or well we'll see what the shipping is to the UK but um, for those that are overseas I should say then I'll do a gift card to Amazon to avoid all the shipping stuff and then that way you can pick out what you want which means I might have another one to give away or two depending on how that whole drawing situation works so thank you for watching thank you for hanging out with me tonight I hope you saw something interesting so I know um, I haven't purchased any big diamond art clubs lately there just hasn't been much catching my eye and I I didn't like the easels that I saw this week they have some more minis but I I seem to be full up on minis haven't done any Tamu orders I haven't really done any orders honestly for about a week and a half to close to two weeks and that's because what I bought this month was big stuff so there's fewer of it because it's all big stuff now this wasn't this I've actually been sitting on for a little while it does take a couple weeks for these to come in from the companies um, these usually for this size run in the 20 to 30 dollar range they're they're quite affordable this one was probably more closer to the 20 dollar range somewhere 20 25 dollars so cross stitches are a bit more affordable than diamond paintings but i spent most of this month's budget on a few big ones which was the stuff i bought from jaded gem shop which was over a month ago before it, it got here yesterday you do have to do some planning for that and my big j wall from the one with the diamond art because i bought two since i was doing the the shipping from the uk i do do get them in pairs and then i got the center wand canvases which were a bit larger and a bit more expensive and then i got two dreamer designs that are sitting over there waiting for me to open them so that's where my money has been this month i went back to the big stuff which means that next month i'll go back to the budget friendly i haven't gotten too many pr packages in i'm waiting on a couple hopefully they'll get here i think there's been a bit of a slowdown with shipping lately but i do probably need to make another budget friendly company diamond painting purchase uh, in august so i should pick a theme what kind of theme do you guys want to see for august diamond paintings which will be late august into early september by the time they arrive but are we interested in fall stuff i typically don't go into horror stuff but you know i've been trying all sorts of things so give me the name of a good horror artist and i'll try to buy a canvas from that and check them out um Although I may, if it's got a lot of black, I'll probably get rounds instead of squares. <laughs> so I don't have to fight with black drills. But I'm okay with round black drills. And I'm okay with rounds instead of squares. So give me a fall or horror or Halloween themed ideas and I'll see what I can find out there. And place an order through one of the, the budget friendly companies out there and see if I can get some more stuff to show you guys. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a good weekend. I will be busy this weekend, but you'll still hear from me at some point by seeing these videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, watch out for those storms, and I'll be back later. Thank you.